They can grow food and burrow to their heart's content. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I only use my house as a place to eat and sleep. Just don't dig under my house and we'll be fighting. I don't even think I care about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, free basement. Free basement, yeah. That's a big-ass basement! It's a cobalt hovel! Great! <laughs> I've begun my guild! <laughs> <laughs> a cobalt guild? Yes! I shall only accept dragonkin of various <laughs> kinds. <laughs> Just tonight not being dragonkin yourself. Yeah, I'm an racist! He's <laughs> dragonkin in spirit! He's a racist! <laughs> Shoot emotions out of my hand, man. Give up on Emotion the rainbows! Weakest 1d6 attack ever. Well, if the golden kobolds are going with you, they're going to leave the black kobolds to the swarm, but since you're taking the wavarin with you, they're going to be leaderless. They'll probably just scatter on their own. Okay. And after the caravan is back more or less on four wheels, you can, it just starts getting pushed into town. The pack animals spooked and left. Okay. The wheel is still on the road. Yeah, well... They were able to bring it out to the road and get it more or less intact. Both of the axles are still intact as well. That's good. Mm -hmm. So they basically just reattach everything to the bed and are pushing it into town. Do they need help? Sure, they'll take it, but they're moving at like 15 foot speed, so it's going to take maybe 20 25 minutes to get into town. You guys oh, want to no. You guys want to stay with them or. No reason see, not to. I don't see any reason not to since. Okay. Hell, I'll get behind the cart and push. Alright. Unless I needed to keep a hand on this cobble here. Or Wivarin. Yeah, in all honesty, with like, the Wivarin could just as easily be chucked in the bed of the wagon while it's being pushed. He's at one hit point, he's not gonna try to fight. Yeah. <laughs> I can put him to sleep. That's the problem. He might make his will save. <laughs> he's actually got some respectful saves. Put him to sleep if that's the problem. Point being is he can be put somewhere where we can all keep an eye on him and still get back to town in a timely manner. Sounds like a good idea. Alright, uh, if that's the case, then there's no real incident on you with, by the time you guys get back to town. Okay, that's good. Uh, the caravan leader is still very, very respectful of this well-dressed individual. I'll go at, like, the, uh, other equipment we found they can go ahead and have back, because I assume it came from the caravan, since it was all human-sized. The uh, great sword, the bow, and the breastplate? Yep. They can have that back since they were, like, delivering it or owned it or whatever. Well, uh, as you return breastplate, the well-dressed individual comes up and thanks you by passing you an amulet. Thank you. She explains that the breastplate was going to someone very special to her, and she's glad to have it back. The longbow and greatsword are claimed by the caravan leader and uh, lead guardsman, respectively. A fellow great weapon fighter like myself, eh? Yep. It's quite a fantastic trade now, isn't it? Does what it needs to do. Exactly. Well, you guys oh, shit. get back to town without other incidents. Great sword because of you, uh, and you guys each have your special your item of choice now. Weapon focus is plus another uh, plus one on damage, right? No. Plus one to hit. Hit. Okay. Specialization is two to damage. Yep. So still at that, and then I get plus one to hit. Ooh. All right. Now it's even harder to hit. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that hard to hit. Then again, none of my things require anything hand-wise or speech-wise, so I can pretty much just walk around unassuming and have people drop around me. Yeah. <laughs> They'll experience whatever the display is, but... Yeah, and I think it'll be pretty obvious when people just start falling over or just have nosebleeds and their ears start rupturing. I'm pretty sure they'll eventually be like, that's not happened to that person. <laughs> huh. <laughs> exactly. 
Anyway, uh, it's you two drop off at his farmland for the moment. Yeah, or and you, uh, along with a small collective of kobolds. Yep. I ask if uh, they have like plots of land designated to each of them, or if they just like uh, communal land. They work as a group. How about it? <laughs> Uh, you can write down somewhere on your character sheet on notes or something, 11 labor in the capital. 11 labor. Be free, little ones. <laughs> Ask if they need anything uh, farming-wise from town. Yeah, that tools would be great. Okay. I just heard towards you, towards town. Head to town! <laughs> The caravan master reports to the Wainwright he needs to talk to about getting the rest of his wagon fixed. And to the. And you two Take are. Take the to the guard captain. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I assume you two are explaining the situation. So, uh, this here is the little punk that was behind the, uh, dis disappearance of that caravan. He had a little band of black kobolds with him. They've scattered. Um, he actually managed to capture and otherwise harass not only the caravan, but an entire group of small gold-scaled kobolds, not unlike the one who came rushing into town screeching caravan at that really annoying pitch. Yeah, I heard about that. So... As far as we know, the gold skin ones are our allies, and the black skin ones are our enemies, but the black skin ones are more or less dispatched. Pretty much! They don't have a leader anymore, because that one's with us! Gotcha, and this was the one who, was orga who organized this whole yes. attack. Yes. I can't admit- Well, I don't know, ask him. It was the one giving commands. You heard it. Yep. Also this is her. true, however. Well, good enough for me. We'll lock him up for now and deal with them. I mean... When the time comes, he appears to be. In t I mean, if he's intelligent enough to plan this, he's obviously intelligent enough for a fair trial. But he might need somebody to uh, patch him up a bit, though. We'll get to him, right? Yeah. I mean, he's practically dripping blood out of his nose. Can't wait until third level. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's that job done. I'm going to stand there like this for a bit. Okay. I'm going to come out of nowhere. He congratulates you on your work and says that there'll be a bonus coming in for you. Great to hear! <laughs> Leave. Oh, well, you're kind of greedy for awful good. <laughs> Just because I'm lawful. <laughs> yeah, out of game. Just because I'm lawful does not mean that I don't need to get paid. You're getting paid anyway. You stood there hoping for a bonus. I stood there hoping for something more immediate. Bureaucracy. Will it never end? <laughs> I was like, well, I was standing there thinking, well, maybe he'll be like, hey, we'll get you in touch with the Knight's Order or something like that. That would be great. Instead, no we're finding farming tools. <laughs> yep. Here's a bonus. Not even an immediate bonus. Not it's even. coming with your next... Yep. Just... Which will happen whenever. Although, you do have companions who went with you? Aye. Alright, uh, send them my way and we'll get them a, we'll, we'll get them a reward as well, since they're not on our usual payroll. Well, since she's right here. Indeed. And other then two. there are, uh, two others, uh, fox-like. Strange ones they are. One of them seems to be mute. We'll see if I can find them and get them your way. There will come a day where you introduce everyone you. to me as a mute. And, and to speaks. avoid notice, I will just start speaking. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, as long as Curse's character keeps saying, I think he's mute, there is no problem. Yep. The moment okay. he starts introducing um, me as the mute, I won't be mute anymore. <laughs> That's what's great about self-imposed mute, though. <laughs> well, that may be true, however, I will- If I figure out- if I actually start figuring out- Oh, hey, he's actually mute, or she's okay. actually mute. So, they're gonna pay I you, uh, you as 
the weird fox. So nine gold immediate bonus and Since I don't know services and a certificate of services within the town. It's okay, my best friend doesn't know my name kind either. Of services. Okay. Merchant services, mostly. What? Merchant services, mostly. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go and try to find these two. Okay. Us? Yes. We're searching for tools. I'm assuming you're at the blacksmith then. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Most likely. I mean, since he makes tools. No, you're trustworthy enough that you can just deliver their packets to them if you want. Oh, well, I can do that then. I'll wait a minute. That'll be a. Uh, Next. Something to do is. I just need the uh, cash for training. Not loadings. Yeah. The Gertzi's U3 is higher on this at the moment. Yeah. Anyways, go find these two. You're up to blacksmith? Uh, yeah. Okay. Present for you. God Captain sends it with his compliments. And you a packet. And you a packet. Open the packet. Open the packet. Same thing, nine gold and a certificate of services within the town. Uh, I'll keep the certificate, but I will give the nine gold to try to get nine gold worth of tools. Including mining, farming, and arch- uh, can I get construction tools? Yeah, construction tools. Those are going to be needed. So, just 11 sets of artisans tools of varying types. Yeah. I have nine gold and a certificate of what? Services. Oh, I lost What's that access. Okay, I lost any access, I'll need the core book again. What does the certificate of services do? Uh... Do I just hand it's, that in instead of giving them nine gold and get all the stuff I just asked for? You could, yeah. I'll do that. Alright. So it's like a reduced to three services depending on what the service is? It, Artists basically, tools. you've been a valuable member of the community. Yeah. Turning this into somebody will basically call on a favor from any member of the community. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. I do this for as many tools as I can get, and if I have stuff left over, lumber. <laughs> At this Lumber's point, I'm going to go and say hello to Dad. Because I've been busy most of the day. Okay. Uh, Let me pull up a calculator real quick. Cause I, to see just how much lumber you can get. Oh, had enough left over for lumber too. Sweet. Unless you want some sets of masterwork tools. Nah. It's no. just kobolds. They're just kobolds. I want to treat them nice, I don't want to treat them like royalty. Then again, kobolds can be a value. No, I mean, you get 45 party. gold worth of lumber. Well, basically, they're getting the get forty-five tools gold instead of shoddy tools. And 11 yeah. sets of artisan tools. 11 sets of various artisan tools. Well, they long before they can upgrade them to bronze. And then iron. Maybe even silver someday. Hmm. But never gold. Never. Gold yeah, tools are always useless. So tools. Oh. Making silly Minecraft. How games. much? I wasn't making Minecraft. How much weight is 45 gold worth of lumber? We're doing what? Uh, you can Harvest get it shipped to your farm. Mm. I'll get it shipped to my farm. Yeah. Definitely. No I, I was just wondering how much it actually is for like construction purposes. Uh, I can never. It always takes me forever to find trade goods. Uh, it's at the front of the uh, equipment section, I know. Is it? Yeah. I never find any book. I think it's like the, one of the first pages in the equipment section. Hold on. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you are correct. Kyle um, found it. I'm glad that Kyle found it. And then I'll get food for wheat, flour, iron, tobacco, or copper, salmon, or one goat, ginger, pepper, or one sheep, one pig, and one Huh? I bought a lot of spade and a white lumber. pick because I obviously need these. Apparently lumber is not a trade good in Pathfinder. I need lumber. Well, yeah, because they never expect you to be like, um, I need to build a house. Well, you could buy firewood, but... What's the cost of firewood? Oh, wood mystery. I'm not looking for mysteries. Yeah, no. Firewood per day, one CP. One copper. Good. And if I'm uh, judging real life, it takes about... Two solid logs. Logs being about chunks that big, that mm. wide. I'd say about. Well, it takes two of those to keep this our fire next year labor under all. capital. Put forty-five gold construction materials. There are forty-four. Never said. Okay, forty-five. Forty-five. So have that delivered there. Hope that can Hang make on. some things. Then I get nine gold worth of rations and food for us to have. Not because it's going to take a while for them to get stuff going. Okay. 
No, unless it's dark wood for whatever reason. That's it's not because it's a wood. special material. Yeah. And a pound of dark wood is ten gold. Yeah. But no, dark wood is a special material. Yeah. yeah, you probably aren't going for dark wood. No. I'm no, going just for wants it. wood that is dark, okay, but not um, dark wood. Like I... a nice mahogany. What? Like, what is the effective cost? What happened is simple. We planned our event, what we were going to do with our money. Ran out of money, had to find a new way to make money. Got a job in the morning after we all went to bed to protect an undine who is going to be investigating some ruins, trying to find some interesting items there. What have you, maybe some lore, who knows. Get to the ruins without any huge events happening, and we find a room with a bunch of glyphs on it that were magical. Each had a contingency spell that activated and one of them summoned an earth elemental, the other one teleported the people in the proximity of it into a pocket dimension should the earth elemental be defeated. Not knowing this, because we all failed our spellcraft checks, I too shouted the earth elemental and me, Chris, and the Undine were teleported into a pocket dimension that was inside of a painting. We were trapped there for a little while and it took our party members about 20 to 30 minutes to figure everything out, open the door, find the painting, and draw us a way to escape. So we escaped from the pocket dimension, they erased the pocket dimension, we brought the painting with us, and we made about 550 gold in favors and 9 gold in just here's some gold money. With that 550 gold I expediated the expense of building two lavatories, the bunks for the kobolds. I made four plots of farmland for the kobolds and I even continued on to make a storage unit for the kobolds and everyone. And we are well on our way to making a proficient guild house. What did everyone else do with their money you might ask? Well, not much. Chris decided he was going to use his 550 golden favors to get in touch with the Order of the Dragon and he'll be taken on as a squire should everything go favorable down that path.